Hollywood Reviews, where we take a look at major Hollywood releases and let you know if they're worth your time, money, and patience. I'm your host, Walter Bernaziak. Today, we're changing things up on highlighting one of Governor State's very own student productions. The name of the production? A Beautiful View of Nothing. Joining us for the discussion is the writer, producer, and sound engineer of the film, David W. Peterson. A Beautiful View of Nothing is an independent short film directed by Blake Labriola. The film was shot on a zero budget, relying on the kindness of others, peanut butter sandwiches, and inflatable mattresses. The movie follows Moses Beale, who lives in a world with a limited timeline. When his friends, family, and co-workers all start to literally disappear, he is left questioning the purpose of spending the remainder of his days alone. Can Moses achieve a lifetime of meaning within five days, or is he destined to fade away like most of those who surround him? That question and more all addressed in A Beautiful View of Nothing. So Dave, this cast is pretty small. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a few dialogue scenes. What was the casting process like for you? Well, it was uh, basically just chance and luck. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was quite a few people that did audition. There was people who had been in stuff before. There was people that hadn't. Um, so at the beginning, you get, you're real excited. And after about the 15 people, <laughs> you kind of just waiting and waiting and waiting for uh, the right person to come in. Um, I love casting because I love to hear the lines. It gives me a chance to re rewrite mm -hmm. because sometimes you'll write something and you won't say it out loud and it doesn't sound realistic or it sounds corny and then you have to take it out. So um, we got really lucky with Pete. Um, we got lucky with Melissa. We got lucky with Marcus. And uh, I remember like Jeff Scuduto I knew already when I wrote it. I was like, yeah, he'd be great for the shopkeeper. And uh, also the assistant director, Saham, um, walked in and though he didn't get the main part we put him in um, part of the thief mm -hmm. um, and he did a really good job with that so yeah so what were you looking for as the writer of the film mm -hmm. what were you looking for in in the moses character um basically somebody that can make expressions um can get something across without having to say anything mm -hmm. which is way harder to do than it actually seems sure. so um the good thing about Pete, I know this might not sound like a good thing, is that he's bald. So like <laughs> his expressions from the back of his head. You can uh, see all the muscles <laughs> in the back there. And there, I remember when we actually cut the trailer, uh, Kim, the cinematographer, showed it to a friend and she said, man, there's a lot of scenes of that guy's head from the back <laughs> because it's just as, ex you know, it has as many expressions as from the front. So mm -hmm. uh, Pete's baldness was a plus, uh, <laughs> his acting. Uh, was also great and um, he was very dedicated, very professional. I can't say enough uh, good things about him. Right. Yeah. So uh, the Sam character in the film, uh, what was it like casting that character? Marcus was great. Marcus was great from the time that he walked in to the time that he left and then on set. Um, he was very powerful. It's a cold read so he came in that means that you have to, he reads the script there mm -hmm. um, and he just knocked it out of the park. I mean, uh, we knew that he wanted, we wanted him somewhere. We weren't sure if we wanted to go with him as Moses at first or him with Sam at first. Um, so we did some discussing with the director, Kim and myself, and decided to go with him for Samson because he, he was uh, very powerful. Mm -hmm. and it was important that Samson be powerful because, well, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, <laughs> you'll have to see the film to see why. Right. I understand that in the original script that they were brothers, Moses yep. and Sam. Uh, what made you change up that relationship between the two? Besides uh, the obvious, they mm -hmm. don't look the same. Um, they don't look like brothers. Well, uh, I went back and I revisited it and I think Moses really doesn't have, doesn't talk about his family. Mm -hmm. He doesn't talk about, in the, in the movie, he doesn't talk about his mother, his father, any of his brothers or sisters. So. Uh, I was like, well, maybe we'll just make him his best friend. But then I went back and wrote some stuff that me and a friend of mine had, would get together and do crossword puzzles and tell jokes and talk about, uh, I don't know, the universe, spirituality, all kinds mm -hmm. of different stuff. Uh, I don't know why, other than the obvious reason why we went back and rewrote it, but uh, it gave me a chance to add some stuff in that I wanted to. So. Um, but I don't have an answer other than the obvious. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's enough of an answer. I think. <laughs> um, Melissa Walker played Judith. Um, her only scene is, is with Moses, and it's it, a really, really powerful scene. Mm -hmm. um, you want to explain how you casted her and how well she did on set and everything? I wasn't in Chicago for the casting, but um, I had seen, I think, her reel. And Blake and Kim had told me that she was fantastic. I think we videotaped. 
uh, her auditioning or something, or she sent in a videotape, I can't remember, not a videotape. An old VHS. <laughs> An old, she sent us actually a VCR and a VHS <laughs> a tape. VSR. Yeah, yeah, and she wrote her name on it. And wow. Sent it off. Yeah, it was great. Wow, the VCR um, player. Man. Well. <laughs> no, and then, yeah, she, <laughs> she did a really good job. So, uh -huh. uh, I don't, she, she did a fantastic job. It was great to work with her. I look forward to hopefully working with her again. So. Right. The chemistry between uh, her and Pete is, is really something to look at. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, the subtleties in, in their one scene together are, uh, can be a film within itself, I think. And even mm -hmm. the, I, I think those two, if they were cast in something else, can carry a whole feature length film by themselves. They actually live right down the street from each other. I too. didn't know that. Yeah, I'll <laughs> give you guys the address when we're done. So. Oh, that's uh, so, but scary. No, they practiced, <laughs> they practiced uh, their breakup, which mm -hmm. isn't scripted. They decided they wanted to get together and actually figure out how they broke up. So that's part of it, I think, uh, why it works so well. Okay. All right, we're going to take a look at, I believe, that scene from the movie. You want to set that up a little bit? Sure. They're meeting, basically, on a park bench, and they're discussing their relationship as uh, they've both moved on, but Moses quite hasn't moved on. Right. Okay, let's take a look at this clip from A Beautiful View of Nothing. I really did love you. I mean, I still love you. I've always loved you. Moses, why? Why did you say that? I can't say that to you. I can't. It's not fair. No, you no, no, you wanted no, to no, be no. honest. Right? No, like... Like love, like friendship. Love. I'm just, I'm not saying this right. We're friends. We dated for a while, and now we're really good friends. That's all. They have an incredible chemistry, and I, I really, uh, it makes you even wish that there was more uh, between those two. But. Yeah, I think that's a secret with writing, with filmmaking, is leave them wanting more. I'm mm -hmm. so tired of sequels that the first, <laughs> the first movie will completely be a mystery, uh, and then the second movie just undoes all the great uh, things that, uh, you know, like, I don't know, this, we were just talking about Blair Witch Project, because you were talking right. about found footage, mm -hmm. which isn't the best example, but then they went and did Blair Witch Project 2, which was garbage. S so, uh, Season of the Witch, is that what it called? Undoes all of the mystery, like, uh, oh, yeah. I, I think that's important. Um, lightning round question, ready? Favorite actor, go. I don't know. <laughs> Nobody? Um, maybe Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. <laughs> Great as Batman. I loved him in Jack Frost. <laughs> I'd like to thank David W. Pedersen for talking with us today about this very unique signature film. Look out for a beautiful Michael view of nothing Keaton. at film festivals in the coming months. Remember, if it's not reviewed here, it just isn't real. I'm Walter Bernazek, and I'll see you at the movies. Did I say Michael Keaton?